All right, we will call this part three, okay? And we just talked about the different ignition designs, the bypass ignition, the non-bypass ignition systems. And I wanted to jump back to this page to explain to you guys, uh, maybe in a little bit more detail now, why the shorted five volt reference circuit, and I think, didn't we write some on that? Did I write some for that before when we were on this page? Do you guys understand now why I'm saying some? Can you answer that question? Why some and others, let's say, let me rephrase it. On some systems with a shorted reference, you will have no spark, no communication, no injector pulse, no check engine light. On others with a shorted five volt reference, no check engine light, no start, no injection pulse, but you'll still have spark. Can you answer which one you will have spark on and which one you won't? Close, close. Bypass ignition systems will still have spark. The older GM and Ford systems would still have spark with a shorted reference circuit. What's a shorted reference circuit do? It kills the computer. So we're in the same, we're in the same subject matter when we say that a dead computer, we could still have spark on those older designs. And what does a shorted five volt reference circuit do? It kills the computer. It's a dead computer. Okay. So I wanted to point that out. Something else too that I was thinking about over break was this broken or jumped chain. I have a nice video on this and it was on a Honda. I think it was a Honda Civic, might have been a Honda Accord. Watch this video. And on this Honda, I know it was a 1.7 liter engine. Honda Civic. This Honda Civic was a start, run, stall, start, run, stall and ultimately ended up being a timing belt that was off. One or two teeth. And you know, just it's a good video to watch as far as variables go. It really wasn't a quote, no spark, because it had spark, but it was losing spark if I remember correctly. Or no, it was not losing spark. The timing changed on it trying to think of the scenario and what put me in that direction of I was not losing spark I was not losing fuel but the car would not stay running yeah it's it, you know what as I'm thinking about this now it was completely not anything that really we're doing here other than doing our ignition to um, firing event sorry other than doing our compression waveform and comparing it to when the firing event took place, which is not what we're talking about right here. That was the, the test that made this thing, you know, possible to identify. So I guess, uh, yeah, that one is not really good for a no start, no spark, although the car was dying out. Still a great video, watch it. In the video, what I showed is a compression waveform, so I had a transducer in the cylinder and we would see something like this cranking. There's more detail to it, but just comparing the pressure wave. TDC uh, is very, very near the peak of that top dead center compression, and that's where our spark should occur. And in that video, what I showed was the spark was occurring there during cranking, and then as we were running it, and when the car was dying out, it started to shift over. So there's one capture, and then the next one, that spark was like way over here. And so what we were able to identify on that car was the computer was severely changing the ignition timing to the point where the car would die. And it ended up being the timing chain that was off, or belt that was off, two teeth, I think. And we reset it in the video and good video, watch it. All right, so where we are now, <clears throat> I said is control testing is where we're going. Page eight, control testing. When we talk about control, guys, I am talking about coil negative. Coil negative. Coil negative 
is the control circuit of the ignition coil. There were some systems back in the day that would switch the power side of the ignition coil. Not any longer. Our coil, all of our coils are ground side controlled. There would be a transistor that is going to control the ground of this primary winding right here. Here's your transistor, it switches the primary on and off. Okay, what we're talking about would be the control wire. This would be your feed, and this is control. Okay, let me go to a different page. And I'm, I'm going to redraw this coil circuit. We'll put ICM igniter or PCM. You guys understand why I'm labeling this like that? Depends on the design where that transistor is going to live. Okay? Control testing. Now, I'm not talking about coil over plug yet. We'll plug that in here too, our coil over plug designs. Some of the coil over plug designs were, were a little bit different. All right, let's say, let's do this. Let's say this is a conventional ignition. And by conventional, I'm saying. Um, a distributor ignition, one coil. This is what, what we would have, okay? Uh, I'm not including the secondary in here, just the primary circuit. A waste spark would be similar in design to this. And I, I want to say all of them, but I'm hesitating because I just did one that the transistor was inside of the coil assembly and I don't remember the vehicle it was on. Well, I need to share the coil, the coil over plug design so you guys have even a remote idea of what I'm talking about right now. Conventional ignition, this is my control wire, okay? So what we're going to be doing in this next segment is control testing. What do we mean by that? That means is the transistor turning on and off to control the coil? It's that simple, okay? I'm going to give you different ways to identify that. On a side note, some of our coil over plug systems will be designed like this. This part here is all internal to the computer. This wire, this is coil positive, this is coil negative, this wire right here would be the control wire. You cannot view the control on a coil over plug engine like this, this three wire design. Coil negative, waveform, the voltage cannot be viewed. It's inside the coil. What is this wire all the time? A ground. So if you were to view the voltage on that wire, what would you see? A ground all the time. This side over here is coil positive. If you were to view a voltage waveform here, what would you see? All the time. Battery voltage. The changing oscillating voltage wire, which is coil negative, it, it's the control wire. I can't see it. It's inside, the, it's inside of the coil itself. Does that make sense? So we need to alter our control testing that I'm sharing with you right now that we're about to do. When it comes to these guys, we're going to alter that. And it's as simple as using an amp probe. 
I can measure the current flow of this primary here with an amp probe. I can measure the current flow of this coil here with an amp probe. I can measure coil primary current and use that as control, not voltage. Okay. What I'm going to teach you guys is putting a test light up here and looking for this test light to flicker and tell you if you have control. Do you understand on the three wire design that I just drew below this that you cannot do that? can't be done. We have to alter what we're doing. We'll need a scope. We can view the computer's on off signal to the coil, but this is a low voltage signal and it will not light your test light. Can't use a test light on that. Maybe an LED test light, not totally sure. So I want to focus guys on Hang on. I want to focus on this design for right now. Okay? The vehicle doesn't start, and we'll follow the text that I have in my book. What can we use to identify our condition or, or what's causing our no spark condition? And I'm telling you that a test light, a conventional test light, don't use an LED test light here. You'll burn that LED test light up. The spikes are too high in the primary. You'll cook that LED test light, most likely. We use an incandescent test light on coil negative, And what we should see when we crank the engine over is this test light should flicker on and off. It should flicker on and off. If you crank the engine over and that light does not flicker on and off, that tells you that you have no control. Okay? All right, now when you do this test, I want you to be careful because when you crank an engine over, system voltage, which would be your feed of the coil, is connected to, system voltage will oscillate from the starter motor. And what you can have is a, a voltage pattern that might be 10 and a half volts to 11 and a half volts, you know, oscillating because of the starter current changes with compression. And what would that do potentially to a test light bulb? It might make it look like it is flickering, but it's not. So in my text, in my book, what page is that? Eight? Where you guys are right now. What I'm telling you to do is to compare coil positive to coil negative. And it's real simple. They should look different from each other. And the reason I have you do that is to prevent you from mistakenly identifying a control, a flickering test light from system voltage changes from the starter. They should look distinctly different from each other. Okay? Okay, the title of the video that I want to refer you to for this segment that we're doing is this one right here. How to troubleshoot a no spark condition with a test light. This follows exactly our page eight information. And we're not going to watch this right now, but I, I want to just get you to the part where this test light is flickering and show it to you. All right, I believe it's right here. This is the new igniter that was put in. That was the, the diagnosis on this car. And when I did this test before, All right, let, let's talk about the diagram here for a second. This is a waste spark ignition system, okay? What we have is a coil here and a coil here enca encased in one housing. 
the wiring for this coil, there would be a feed wire coming in, which happens to be the yellow middle wire. It splits and goes between the two coils, internal. And then inside of these coils would be a primary winding. And then what we would have is two control wires. They're red and blue. So I can maybe color coordinate this. Here's the, uh, possibly if this ink works. Don't look like it's going to for me. This blue wire would extend, come out of the harness. Kind of screwed that up, didn't I? There's the blue side, and then the red side. This is going to come out. Right, so do you understand the wiring for this? One positive, two controls. It's no different than what we're doing right now with one coil. We just have two control wires. What are we looking for? In this test, what am I doing? My test light is connected to ground, and I am looking for control. What is control? Control would be pulsing of this transistor. Can it be identified with a test light? Watch the test light. Coming up here in a second. Let this part roll with sound. Blink, even though there's control there, and it has to do with the current limitate. Yeah, we, we'll leave that out of there for right now. Igniters, you want to be careful of that, which is why I showed the ant probe reading earlier. And uh, one final test will be, I'm going to show you what the scope looks like with coil negative control. Wait, using looks like we missed it. Hold on. I want you to see where I crank it. Got control on the blue wire. Cool. Now, I did not have this going into this video before. So we have coil negative control on that top wire. We're going to move the test light to the bottom blue control. Just missed it. We'll check them both. On the red and green control wire to the coil, this would be coil negative control. Go ahead and crank it. See the flicker of the light? Flicker in the test light indicating control of this coil. That's what we were looking for in the first place. So we do have coil negative control on that top wire. And what I'm going to do in the next shot, I'm moving that to the bottom blue wire. Just showing a before and after. And I'll, I'll get you back to the beginning of this video where I showed the control from the beginning. There you go. There, you see the flicker of that light. All right. At the beginning of this video, I did the same test. And we, we you know, I jumped the gun on you guys. If you haven't seen this video before, I am, uh, it had a bad igniter. And I did all of my troubleshooting with a test light. To, to condemn the igniter. I mean, there was a few tests at the end I needed to verify with my, with my scope, but most of it was done with the, with the test light. In this test right here, what am I doing? That's the middle wire. What wire is that? Yellow. I know it's yellow. <laughs> I can see that. I, it's, yes, you're right, Jamie. It's the yellow wire. Which wire is that? That's my feed wire. <laughs> Right? That's the power feed to the coils. My red and my blue are the two control wires. I'm just giving you a hard time, Jamie. It's no big deal. You're right. That is a yellow wire. That is my feed. Why would I be putting my test light into the feed wire? Is I want to compare the feed compared to the control, and I should see a distinct difference between the two. Okay? So, and then I'm, I believe I'm cranking it in here. Let's get some sound. Uh, I didn't really see a, a flicker with that, can, or with that feed wire, but you can at times, especially when the battery's weak, and it's, it's a good practice to do it. You saw, though, it didn't flicker, really did it. All right. It should be a nice, steady light, and it shouldn't go out. That's a good feed. The next thing we want to do is we want to check the controls. Okay, so I moved the test light to the red control wire. That's coil negative control, and what we should see is a flicker in this test light if there is coil negative control. Cr uh, crank it. Okay. I was cranking right there. That was completely different than it was when we finished, wasn't it? All right, so I just wanted you to have a good visual of what I'm trying to illustrate here to you. It is a great direction tool to start with. 
if you have no control on the coil, you shouldn't be replacing the coil. Do you know how people say, well, let's try a coil? Do you know what I mean? Why would you try a coil when the coil is not even being turned on and off? It, it's that simple. Uh, it's a great beginning tool. And I would, I would like to tell you that it's perfect and, and is accurate in all circumstances. It is, except there's an asterisk to this test. And we'll cover that in a minute. There is a time that this test can be misleading. And we'll get to that. But for now, you understand that if we have control, we're going to turn left. And if we don't have control, we're going to turn right. If we have control, if we see the coil pulsing like I showed at the end of this video, after replacing the igniter, if you saw pulsing when you started and there was no spark from that coil, we need a coil. And I'd like to tell you that that one's perfect too and there wouldn't be any, any variable to that. There's not. There's a variable to that one too and we'll cover it coming up. I have a couple case studies that will handle these variables. But it, it's still a good test even though it's not 100% accurate. It's a good direction test. Can you bail out your friend in the driveway of his house with his car and all you have is a test light? You can't. Control. All right. So this one should look completely different. The control wire should flicker on and off. And let's go back to what I have. Coil negative pulses means what? If coil negative is pulsing, that means we have control and our coil is bad. If coil negative doesn't pulse, don't put a coil in it. We have to go further. Now, if it doesn't pulse, what I'm saying is there's no control, okay? And there's two different things that it can look like. It might be a constant light, or it might be no light at all. No pulse, no control, no light. No pulse, no control, constant light. We treat these differently. Do you see this or statement here? That's the one we're going to cover further. And this one here, this bad coil, we need to put an asterisk there and say, let me find the page. We want to see the case study on page 20. See case study on page 20 is what we need to write there. Okay, this asterisk right here, see case study on page 20. There's a variable. It's bad coil, but you could still have a bad ignition module, I guess is what I'm telling you. I, I hate to do that to you. You know, the longer I teach for years, I'd say it's a bad, it's a bad coil. You, know, you see control and you have no spark or, or weak spark, your coil's bad. But then I run into this case study down the road where I'm like, oh crap, that changes that test, you know, and I need to warn you about it in case you change the coil and you still have no spark or weak spark. I don't want you to be upset with me. And so I do the, I'm doing the best I can with this test light. Uh, and I guess the more I use the test light here, the more I realize that we still need the scope. And I'm trying to give you a test that avoids the scope, but then I keep coming back to the scope because this test light isn't foolproof no matter which way I attack the circuit. 
We'll, we'll get to this case study here, and we'll get to this case study here, okay? Just hang with me with this test light for a second. Coil negative pulses, no spark. We have a pulse, put a coil in it, okay? That's what this, the text here says. Forget the variable for a second. Coil negative doesn't pulse, means there's no control, and this hyperlink here is the video we were just watching, that Subaru. No control, so what does the light look like? If we have a constant light, or if we have no light, we're in another fork in the road, okay? Let's come back to this, and let's plug in those. No control, we've identified our coil positive looks the same as coil negative, and let's say when we connect up our test light, it is lit constantly. Before we would condemn this ignition module, the igniter, the computer, wherever the transistor is, before we condemn that, are there things we need to be thinking about? Like what? Give me some, some things that this igniter or computer or module would need to be able to function. Very good. I need to have inputs, which would be cam and crank, available to this device for it to function. It's not going to work on its own. So if we have no control, we may have an RPM input problem. We would want to check our RPM, check our cam, check our crank, check your computer signal. What else? I would want to verify my inputs. What else? I'll give you another one. How about codes? Can I read, check my trouble codes? Can we back up to where we were before? Check our cam crank inputs, look at RPM signal on the scan tool. Now we're back to that, right? Okay, if all that is good, what about a computer that won't communicate with you? You turn the key on and the check engine light's not on. We should probably stop with the ignition system right there and go in a completely different direction because the computers might potentially dead. So we verify that by turning the key on and looking for a 5-volt reference somewhere. Mm -hmm. Refer back to section 9, I believe, is my 5-volt reference chapter. We've talked about this. Coil, you, know, you, you started at the coil because you, you realize the car doesn't start and that was the easiest place to to start in your diagnostic process, you found no spark, you found no control, then you turned the key on, looked for a light, there was no check engine light, you tried connecting your scan tool, it doesn't talk to you, right? We've just now changed direction. We're not on the ignition system anymore, we don't care about this transistor and the control wire or anything. Okay, let's say all of that is good, inputs, no codes, or nothing that would help you, Powers and grounds are all good, everything's talking. What would be your next step? Before you would say replace an igniter or ignition module, let's leave the PCM out of this one, right? Let's make this an igniter or ignition module. Before we would replace that device, you're not done with your checks here. The next step would be to come over here and check the same circuit. Since you're using your test light, stay with it. If the light is not lit in this location, but is, let me use my magic pen. I like it. Keeps this from being cluttered. If your light is lit here and is not lit here, what is the problem? We are back, very good, Billy. We are back to our injector tests, our ground side switch circuit tests again, aren't we? The light being lit here means you have battery voltage here, 12 volts, right? And the light not being lit over here means you have zero volts, so you have an open in this wire. That's the only possible cause of that. We have an open. If your light is lit over here and lit over here, how's that control wire? It's good. Now we focus on the igniter itself and that's what I showed in that video. Does that make sense? So let's see what I have written 
in the text to make sure we didn't miss anything. Constant light, no pulse on coil negative. I'm, I'm throwing in the scope here. Measure coil primary current. We'll do that in a minute. Um, open in the control wire is an option. And open in the driver itself or an input problem. What do we do? Look, we just covered this. Move the test light to the module or PCM on the same wire. No light. What do we have? Open wire. Constant light. What do we have? A driver problem. But before we would condemn that driver, we would always do this. Powers, grounds, inputs. This is standard. Yes, Jamie. Sure. No, you can use two test lights on this circuit. You're not going to hurt it. I don't know why you'd really feel the need to, though. I mean, you wouldn't have to use two test lights. You wanted to, you're saying, like, leave, leave one at the coil, leave one here, and then, then use this one over here. Yeah. You can do that. And, and let's talk about the test lights for a second, because I hear people, again, saying, man, you shouldn't use a test light on a computer-controlled circuit. Well, the people that would say that here have no idea and have never put an amp probe on an ignition coil and actually know what kind of current flow these things draw and know what kind of voltage spikes are on these circuits. We saw one the other day, 400 volt spikes on this coil negative circuit right here, spiking upwards of 400 volts whenever this field collapses on the coil. And then the amperage through these things, anywhere from 6 to 10 amps of current is your average current flow. How much amperage is your incandescent bulb test light? 200 milliamps? You're not going to hurt this circuit, even with two test lights, Jamie. Not a chance. No dangers here at all. Okay? All right, what if the light doesn't light in this first test here. So what we said, we're doing control testing with the test light, right? And we start with this process and this light in this location does not light. What's the first thing that you should do? Very good, Dave. Check and see if I have power on the other side. Make sure that this side is lighting. By the way, all of these tests, I am connected to ground so far, okay? Um, and I don't know if I address this. I guess I have to. On a good circuit, this one on negative will light just as bright as the positive. You will see no difference. And the reason why? is this coil on average is one to two ohms of resistance. It is a low, low ohm coil. It's a very high amperage coil and your test light when you connect it is not causing any real measurable voltage drop across that coil and the voltage available to this test light, it might be, you know, if it was 12, having issues with this marker too. If it was 12 volts over here, it might be 11.8 over here that you dropped at 0.2 of a volt through, you know, with your test light being connected. Are you going to see a bulb difference in brightness between 12 volts and 11.8? You won't, you won't. All right, so new scenario, I am connected to coil negative and the light doesn't light. Coil positive, it does. We wanna make sure of that because if it doesn't light on coil positive, then you have no business attacking the control circuit of this coil if coil positive is dead. Right? So coil positive is dead, what type of stuff are we thinking of? If we have no power on the coil positive circuit. Blown fuse, ignition switch, fusible link, right? Don't forget about Chrysler systems with ASD relays. What does a Chrysler system ASD relay do? 
that ASD provides power to this coil and to the fuel pump on the same circuit. And even when they split the relays and put a fuel pump relay in, they still controlled it off the same driver. So the point is, if you just have the key, if you just have the key on, you're not going to have power on the ignition coil. So then you're thinking, all right, well, I'll crank it over. You crank it over, you still don't have power on the ignition coil. If you crank an engine over on a Chrysler like this and you don't have power on the coil, you have an input problem. You're barking up the wrong tree. Why? Input problem. Wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Well, if the fuel pump needs to have an RPM signal as a safety measure or we won't turn it on, if you're missing your input, the pump won't run either. It's a safety issue and neither will your ignition coil have positive. Be careful. It isn't just Chrysler that does this. Make sure you have power on coil positive when? I think I even say this in the text on page eight. Do I say check it when you're cranking? Check coil positive when you're cranking? There's two reasons I wanna check coil positive cranking. One, so I can see that flutter from starter current, and not mistake that for the flicker of coil negative control. And two would be to make sure that I'm getting power there through a relay circuit that needs an RPM signal. Crank it when you check it. All right, so we have power and we find no light on coil negative. Do you understand we are in a different direction than we were just a minute ago with constant light? We have no light. So with no light, there are, we've done this already. See if this makes sense. We're going down the road and we have uh, a branch and we are going to do a test right here that tells us where we're going and here's what I want to know, do I have current flow or not? This will answer my path. Over here, we have no current and we're going to have options for faults. And over here, we have current and we're going to have options for faults. Does that ring a bell? We just did this with injectors. Now we're on a, t on a coil primary circuit using a test light and we're really doing the same thing. So what quick test can I do to verify this? Well, let's think about it for a second. If the coil negative control wire was shorted to ground, wouldn't we have a constant current flow through this coil on its way to ground all the time? And wouldn't that pull the voltage in this circuit down to zero all the time? And so if my test light's connected to ground and this is ground here, that's certainly not going to light the light. That would be one. A second one would be my driver in the computer is shorted and grounding the circuit all the time. Same thing, power comes through the coil on its way through the driver to ground and this whole circuit would be zero volts all the time. I'm connected to ground here. The test light's not going to light. Okay, that's the second scenario. The third one would be the coil is open. If the coil is open, I would have the same thing. I would have no current flow though. I would have no light, right? But I would have no current flow. Whoops. So what can we do? Simple, watch. Leave your test light where it is. Connect your test light now to battery positive. If the test light lights, test light lights, we're going this way. Whoops, nope. Test light lights, we're going this way, right? Sorry, I'm confusing myself. Let me back up. Wait till that disappears. Connect your test light. If we connect this test light to battery positive and this light lights, we had current flow on that circuit. That means we had a ground somewhere on the circuit, whether it be wire or driver, and we're going this way. If the test light, when we connect it, does not light when we connect to battery positive, we are going this way. And what is over here with no current? Open coil winding. What's over here with current? Short 
to ground where? Either in the control or the driver, right? So control wire or driver. Does that make sense? Sort the ground in the control wire or driver. So open coil winding, we're done. Sort the ground in the control wire or driver, we're not done. We gotta finish. This test light is lit. What do we do? Is it this or is it this? You guys should be able to answer this. We've done this before, just in a little bit different format. You want an answer right now? Yeah. Based off of the light bulb flashing? It's not flashing. It's, it's, yeah, it's, lit all the, it's lit all the time. And I want you to be able, there's a test we need to do to answer the question of whether or not the wire shorted to ground or whether or not my transistor is shorted to ground. Let me ask you this before you answer. Should coil negative ever be grounded all the time on any car? No. And that would be a perspective you would need to know. This is an absolutely abnormal condition that should never happen. If it did, we would overheat that primary winding and cook that coil would be the result of this. And it will happen too. When you have this condition, it'll cook that coil. You'll end up needing a coil too when you're done. But you gotta find out what's causing this condition. Is it the driver or is it the wire that's short at the ground? Go ahead, Dave, you were gonna say something now. Okay, let's, let's think about that for a second. Let me get rid of this arrow here. It's annoying. This test light's lit. So if you, you're saying to put a voltmeter here, measure voltage. If this, think about this now. If this light is lit, you have a feed going into the light. The light is lit because this is a ground. I promise you, no matter where you measure this circuit, it's going to be zero volts. We knew that before we put the voltmeter on it. So what I'm telling you is the voltmeter is not helping you at all. Amp clamp wouldn't help you either, Dave, because amperage is the same throughout the circuit. That amperage is flowing in here somewhere. Well, I guess you could make the argument if you put the amp clamp here and then put the amp clamp here, if you have no current over here, then the wire shorted to ground in front of it. You could make that argument. There's an easier way. That, that, that would work. Yes, exactly, because we've done this before. All we need to do, all we need to do is disconnect this device and take note of what your test light does. If the test light stays lit, which one is it? The wire's shorted to ground, right? If the test light goes out, it is the driver, whether it be an igniter or module or a PCM, right? Any warnings here we need to worry about? There sure is. Back feeds. Uh-oh. We're on the same, we're on the same thing we did before. If you are relying on this light to tell you what's going on, you better make sure that you have 12 volts available still here. Because if you don't, that light can back feed and find a path somewhere else and light and give you inaccurate results. So when you do this type of testing, what should you do? Just disconnect the coil. Get that thing out of there, right? If you disconnect the coil and you can, your light is connected to battery positive here and that light is lit, I promise you it's not a back feed and that eliminates that variable, okay? And if that thing is still connected, you have to think about those variables because when you unplug the computer, you may eliminate power to the other side and cause inaccurate readings. We're on the same thing we did before with the Noid light. Same thought process. It's not as hard as it sounds. It really isn't. We've done this before. Constant light, no pulse, coil negative. So I'm, I'm reading up here, just making sure we covered this good. Constant light, we did the constant, that was our opens. The one we just did was our no light one, no pulse on coil negative. What are our options here? Options would be 
No power to the coil. We want to make sure we have that. Check coil positive, cranking or running for some systems. And why did I put that note? Just ASD should be the note for you there. I'm picking on the ASD. There are other systems that do this. Chrysler's not the only one. I just know the name of that relay. So our options would be what? Open coil primary, short to ground on the control wire, or shorted driver. What do we do? Connect a test light now to battery positive, touch on the control wire. Now why would I put this note here? That, that should be underlined, highlighted with exclamation points. I don't want to back feed. I have coil unplugged to just make sure we don't get a back feed through the circuit. Okay? Do you understand how hard it is to write a good flow chart now? Because you're going through a flow in your mind and you're like, okay, and this is what I would do and this is what I would do. And then you're like, but when I get here, there's a few things I need to be thinking about when I do this test. This is an example of one of those. You leave that coil plugged in and, and that coil circuit loses power, you can potentially get a back feed and that light will light and you'll have inaccurate results of, as far as where you're going. Okay. All right, so we had a couple variables we need to talk about now, right? One of them was our bad coil and we had an asterisk here and another one was where? Um, coil negative doesn't pulse, no control and then there's this one or the coil white. Let's do that one first. Coil negative doesn't pulse. No, sorry, that one will take longer. Let's do, let's do the bad coil one first. If we come to a car and coil negative pulses and we have no spark, what I'm telling you is the control is there, you have a bad coil. Pretty simple test, okay? All right, let's plug that into this one. This was on Kia, Hyundai, I don't remember exactly. I have a video on this Honda that was similar. Um, guys, this is a bad module, okay? There's no spark. This is a bad module. The setup with this, if we're going to use the test light and compare this, coil positive, Here's your coil. Inside of this igniter is a transistor. Here's coil negative, here's coil positive. Test light connected to coil negative. On this car, this test light would flicker on and off. Okay? Telling us that we have control. You with me? And what I'm saying is if this vehicle doesn't have spark, if this coil doesn't have spark, what do we need? A coil. Okay, here's the asterisk. Here's the variable. This module was not grounding the coil properly. And that's why we didn't have spark. There is control, but it's weak. Look at the picture. This is coil. This is very similar to an injector pattern. So this is not completely new to you. If you're on the ground side of a circuit, like this, which we are. And I have a voltmeter connected here, a scope, a very fast voltmeter. What is the voltage here with the driver off? So the picture here would be, forget this, a switch, right? Switch is open. What's my voltage right here? Battery voltage, good. So you see this 10 volt line right here and I'm cranking this engine over, it doesn't start, so my battery voltage is weak. No big deal. What happens next? Transistor turns on, so this should pull down very, very near ground, and it did. Okay? That would be when current flow begins. So if you also would put an amp clamp on this, which I have an amp clamp connected to, either here or here, reminding you again that amperage can be measured on either side, where a voltage waveform can only be measured on the negative side, or the control side, 
what you'll notice is the amperage is climbing to about one amp of current. Now, if you know anything about ignition coils, which now you do, they should be somewhere between six and 10 amps on average. By the way, this point two, this is two amps. And this point four, this is four amps. Forgive me for not having a note in there. Same way over here on the right. This is six amps, this is eight amps, four amps. I'm using an amp probe that every 100 millivolts is one amp. What do we, do you remember our peak and hold injector discussion? I told you this was gonna help us. Do you remember in the peak and hold injector section when our voltage wasn't really pulled all the way to ground anymore and I called it a quote, intentional bad ground? This igniter is not grounding this coil properly. The transistor is not grounding this coil properly. It did for a small moment in time, and then all of a sudden, this voltage went real high on the ground side, which you can see completely corresponds with the flat top of the current. That would be our, quote, current limiting section. This was not a bad coil. This was a bad ground, but not a bad ground on the igniter itself. It was the transistor that was bad. What does the transistor do? It controls the ground. So in a sense, yes, this is a bad ground. So before we would condemn the igniter, we would check the igniter ground and make sure the ground is good there. And if it's good there, we're done. This is doing something it should never do. It's not letting this coil build up. This is after replacing the igniter. I didn't change the coil. It needed an igniter. This is the same car afterward. What do we see? I see a nice clean line, a ground very near zero for a lot longer period of time. Now, why is that rising right there? How much current flow do we have going on here? A whole lot, right? Once we hit that six amp line, then it adds some resistance in the ground to level it off. That was to prevent the coil from burning up. This is today's systems to prevent coils from burning up. We, we add resistance and, and we limit the current until the cylinder is ready to fire. Otherwise, if we continue to add more and more current, we burn up the windings. It's called coil saturation. Every coil has a specific magnetic field strength that once it's achieved, we, even if you increased current, it wouldn't get any stronger. So we saturate that coil, then we hold it there until it's ready to go. That's what's going on here. So there's circuitry involved in that transistor that's pretty smart. And something got pretty messed up in this one, wouldn't you say? All right, here's the point, guys. Look, the point with this, this is the beginnings of our scope test stuff too, but the point with this is, do you understand that the test light could have still flickered on this system? Was there control? I, I'm, I'm seeing, if I, if I were to put a test light here on coil negative on this design, the test light flickering would have told me that there is control and that I needed to replace the coil. And I would have had the same problem when I was done. Is there a magnetic field that's collapsing? Yeah, I mean, I'm getting a spike. There's 70 volts. It's off the chart. It's off the page. I think if I remember, this test light did flicker. So do you understand the variable now? If here, Let's go back to what page is that? Page eight. Coil negative pulses. What am I telling you? Bad coil. So the asterisk is what? A failing driver that would be you guys understand can I just leave it at driver mm -hmm. yeah. driver would be either in the igniter in the module or in the computer depending on the design a failing driver can how do I word this can cause inaccuracies. Is that two C's and one R or one C and two? C-I-E-S, thank you. Inaccuracies with 
this test. And then that's the note you had before, which is C page 20. And then down the road, it would probably be watch this lecture again. You'll thank me for it. I wish there was an answer here that I, I could say, look, the test light is, is accurate in all circumstances, and it's not. Is there a time that you need a scope? Page 20, if there is ever a case study that would say you need a scope, it would be on page 20, the one we just covered. How else would you have caught that? An amp probe and a voltage pattern was absolutely necessary to know that that module or that driver was malfunctioning. I don't know of any other test that could have identified it. You would just be parts changing. Change the coil, well that didn't work. Let's change the igniter, well that worked. Cool, what did you learn on that? Nothing, that's what you're gonna do on every car you get. That's crap. Learn these tests, get yourself a scope, you need one. All right, let's do this variable now and then we'll take a break. Coil negative doesn't pulse means there's no control and I said to you guys what? No control, put, don't put a coil in it, right? No control, don't put a coil in it. Uh, one more picture just to emphasize this. This is a graphing multimeter doing the same thing. Showed you with the test light. This car has no spark. What is this? This is on coil negative. What is all that crap in there? We would call this control. What is the pulsing? The pulsing is it's this thing right here. You're looking at this event. See the blue trace here? Look at the blue trace. You're looking at that event occurring over and over on a five second screen. What is my time base here? Um, don't have it listed. Milliseconds. It's going to be, this is a 10 millisecond screen. What is this? This is a five second screen. Do you understand how close together they would be on a five second screen? You can't see detail there, but what does that activity tell you? This would be your test light flickering if you put a test light on it. It's control, right? No spark, I have control, what is this? Bad coil, right? Over here, no spark, no control. What are we saying? It is, it is not a coil problem. This is what we've done so far. There's just another picture of it. Test light would not flicker over here to the right. Test light would flicker over here to the left. Is there a variable here? Yes. Is there a variable here? Yes. We covered this one already. Page 20. This one to the right, we're about to cover it. So I got this Chrysler. Starting right here. It's a coil over plug engine. This one's fun. I like this one. V6 engine, single cylinder misfire, coil over plug. The design here would be that the coils share a feed and internal, so here's coil, internal to the PCM is the driver. Remember it's a Chrysler and Chrysler's didn't use external ignition modules so the coils were directly controlled by the engine computer. They were two wire coils. Coil over plug, there's six of them. So now we have six primary circuits, six secondary circuits, six different drivers in the computer, okay? And we'll just compare two of them. So just so you have perspective, the secondary would be here right and then we'd have spark coming out of that guy here and here's the secondary here and we would have spark coming out of that guy there and let's say this is cylinder number four and this is cylinder number five and there would be one for every single cylinder on the car what Dana I'm looking. I know but you have that I'm, I'm okay cool guys the cool thing about this these coil over plug designs is they're no different than the distributor coils that we've used for 40 years you know, a distributor a coil as a primary and a secondary, a, a, you know, and, and we're doing the same thing. We just have one on every cylinder now. And, it, you know, people were afraid of them when they first came out. But when you study them, the testing of them is no different than testing any other coil. The only difference would be that three wire one I mentioned where the driver's inside. We'll, we'll come back to that. These are two wire ones. So we're, we're comparing 
say two different cylinders, and, and I think it was the number five uh, with a one cylinder misfire. I'm not telling what cylinder, it doesn't matter. My memory says it was a number five, okay? So I'm looking at these two, and the first thing I'm doing, these are voltage waveforms. So if I want a voltage waveform, which side of the coil do I need to be on? The positive, the feed, or the negative, which is the control for a voltage waveform? Control, negative. So I have my scope connected to this wire and this wire. And I'm showing two different voltage waveforms. When viewing primary voltage, you would want your voltage scales to be very high. Uh, notice this is a 400 volt, 0 to 400 volt screen. It's really 500 volt, isn't it? Got some negative numbers I'm not using. But I chose that because I know the primary circuit, when it collapses, will exceed 300 volts on average. Little scope stuff going into it. We know how to set our scope up. What do we see? I'm on a long time base, so this event is very condensed. I'm just looking for control. Does that make sense? Does this coil over here to the left have control? Yes, it does. This coil over here to the right, I see zero volts here. There's 50. That looks like that's pretty much battery voltage right there, doesn't it? Coil negative is pretty much 14 volts on this other coil. That would be this top one. Let's, let's call it 14 volts. Flat line here, right? What would we say about this? I would say, and I think you would agree, that there is no control. Does that make sense? All right, if there's no control, would you put a coil in, the, in this engine? Very good. No, you guys are all shaking your head. No, we wouldn't put a coil in this. There's no control. And if there's no control, why are you replacing the coil? That's not going to fix the control issue, right? And I would agree with you. Would the test light flicker on this cylinder? You're saying yes. Why would you say that? What makes the test light flicker? What makes the test light flicker is when this coil gets grounded, the test light will momentarily go out because we're connected to ground. Test light goes out. And then when it comes back up the spike or back to battery voltage, the test light lights again. And then when the test light or the circuit's grounded, the test light will go out because our test light's connected to ground. Ground to ground, light's not lit. Ground to power, it is lit. It's really not a power, it's a control circuit waiting for a ground, but that's what makes the light light. So the picture over here, would your test light flicker if you were connected to this circuit and ground? No. Would your test light flicker if you were connected to this circuit and ground? Yes. So further confirming, no control says don't put a coil in it. Just two different ways to attack. It. Next page. Same picture, although what I've done now is I have installed an amp probe. So let's back up so I don't have to redraw this. I put an amp probe now on this circuit, amperage, and this circuit, amperage. I would need two amp probes though, wouldn't I? I actually didn't do it there. I put the amp probe over here. Why would I do that? I put the amp probe over here on the, on the feed side. I can read both coil amperages staggered individually. So just a little more scope stuff there. I put an amp probe on both, okay? Here's the thing. The red trace is my amperage. And you can see the red trace matching the blue trace here. Every time we have a blue trace Activity, we have a red trace activity. That would make sense. When we turn the circuit on, it gets grounded, current flow begins. When we turn the circuit off, here, yeah, it stops. Up here, amperage down here, voltage. That doesn't make sense. How can you have, how can you have on this picture current flow? through, let's say the number five is our issue, right? We have current flow through this, and we do because of my amp probe, right? I'm showing amperage, um, but no 
ground, no control with the voltage. How, how is that possible? Well, I think it's time. I think it's time to take this and zoom in on one of those and zoom in on one of these and show you the difference. Next page. There's activity. We can see it. You guys that were part of my injector shorted, shorted injector conversation, you already know what's wrong. What is it? That's, that's no Very good, guys. No counter electromotive force. That primary winding is shorted out. Okay? So, what is that? I think we need to go in one more time. One more time. There is control on the voltmeter. There is control. What are we looking at? What we're looking at is a driver that is protecting itself from too much current flow. This primary winding is so shorted out and the amperage increases so fast that what that driver does is it, it grounded the circuit, okay? And the amperage peaked at the same time it grounded the circuit, so it immediately started to current limit to protect the computer. It's protecting itself. So this is what I would call an intentional bad ground. It's ground side switched. And what we're doing, I put the numbers for you. Here's a cursor here and a cursor here. So we got 13, 9, and 12, 5. We have a 1.3 volt difference. Basically, we're taking battery voltage and we're dropping it by 1.3 volts, which is enough current flow to make this thing draw. And again, there's my scales. This is 4 amp, this is 8 amp, there's 12 amp. Looks like about, I don't know, 9 or 10 amps. 9 or 10 amps of current flow with only a 1.3 volt drop. That is a major shorted coil. We know that just by looking at the, the waveform though, right? No straight up lines in any coil of wire. Okay, now, do you understand that what I told you with the test light is coil negative, if it doesn't pulse, there's no control. And I said, why would you put a coil in it? What's this car need? A coil, wow, it's contradictory now. So, I know, I'm sorry, <laughs> forgive me. I, I'm not making this stuff up, I promise. I wish I could make it all nice and pretty and get rid of all the gray areas. If I could do that, then anybody could do this. If you want to make money, and this is cool and fun right now, maybe later it won't be, but right now this is kind of fun. You'll enjoy this later, I promise. And you'll have all this up in your head and you're going to make a freaking killing because nobody knows this stuff. And it's not that hard. It's not. I don't want to say my background on recording right now. Do you know? I didn't figure out I had a brain until I was in my 20s. It's not that hard. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so lesson here is what? Is the test light foolproof? No. And if you look back on page eight, you'll, you'll see the note. Um, it's going to be tough for me to get back there quickly. Let's go back to page eight. What do I have? Coil negative doesn't pulse. I have the note in here for you. Coil negative doesn't pulse. Let me get rid of this ink. Coil negative doesn't pulse means there's no control, right? I have an or. It's right here. Or what? In this Subaru video, I address this problem by putting an amp probe on my circuit and cranking it over and making sure I didn't have any amperage. That's the key. But guess what? It, we're back to a scope again. I'm trying to give you tests that don't involve a scope, and I keep coming back to you need a scope. You know, if anyone ever argues with you guys that are at Toyota, you guys even have the Pico scope as part of your program. There's guys in the higher up in the company knows you need a scope. The guys in your shop may think you don't need one. 
you bring up this case study, you tell me how you would attack this otherwise. So they might say, well, ohm the coil. Okay, ohm the coil, it ohms just like the other ones. How is that? How can you have a sorted coil give you the exact same resistance that a good coil is? The reason why, it's not under stress. The stress of the amperage and current through that coil heats it up, the windings short together. You take the stress away and the windings unsort. You don't believe me? I'm about to show you one. I got a picture of one. It's like one of the last pictures here. I, I get tired of people saying, do a resistance check on the coil. Why don't you do a resistance check on the coil? You, this is one time, don't bother. Don't bother. Look, spec, this is a, a, a cylinder, uh, has no spark. You can see the spark line's missing. There's a good spark line. Top picture has a shorted secondary winding. We're going to talk about this after the next segment. It won't be today probably, but we're going to focus on this area in here to tell us whether or not we have a shorted secondary. Not shorted primary, but shorted secondary. Top coil has a shorted secondary winding. I did a resistance check on it. 7,600 ohms. Spec, 6 to 8,000. Is that in spec? All right, very good. Bottom one, 6,900 ohms. Spec, 6 to 8,000. Resistance is good. That coil's not bad. Yes, it is. Wrong tool, need a scope, and an amp probe. Okay? I see it over and over again. Good resistance readings on coils that are bad. We need to stress them. We need to be able to look at them when they're under stress. And the reason we need a scope is this thing's only turned on for, what's this picture? This is zero, this is, that's 25 milliseconds. I think the entire event occurs every 25 milliseconds or during this cranking situation. It would be less with it running. You're not gonna catch that on a voltmeter that updates every 500 milliseconds if you're lucky, right? You'd have how many events taking place? Four and then, like you'd have 20 events taking place before the voltmeter would even take another sample. It happened 20 more times, the whole entire event. Are you going to see that with a voltmeter? No. Do you need a scope? Yes. All right, everybody clear on this one? There's one piece that I failed to share with you because it really wasn't necessary to prove my point. In the field, it was very important. In the field, I approached this differently. I've got to redraw this real quick. Here's my coil. Here's another coil. When I started in the field, guys, I had 12 volts here. Okay, I had control on this one. No control up top. Put an amp probe on it here. Had no amperage. Next step, came to the computer, had 12 here, no amperage, single cylinder miss. This driver was bad. This is the approach. Now from here is the rest of it. My concern, I know I have a bad driver. That driver most likely is bad because this coil cooked it. So how did I get the rest of these pictures? I kind of lied to you a little bit. I took this control wire and this control wire and I switched them. I took this circuit and I put this one. Here's my suspect coil, right? I'm worried about this coil because I know this driver's bad. I took this and I ran it on here and I did the rest of my checks, my amperage and my voltage on this circuit with the good driver on it. Now you might be thinking, why? Why would you do that? You're going to cook that other driver. You're right, but I don't care. I already need a computer, don't I? I've already did my diagnosis. I need a computer. And I want to stress this coil, not ohm it. Ohming the coil isn't going to help me. I want to stress it. Now, could I, as a safety measure, change the computer and that coil? You better if you don't have a way to do this. You have an output with one driver that has failed. You better change that output when you change that computer. Okay? as a safety measure. But this is what I did. So the, the argument is, well, aren't you going to hurt the computer? Yeah, so it's already hurt. 
So I have a two-cylinder misfire when I'm done. Don't care. I need to make sure. When I did this, did that confirm this coil was sorted? The rest of these pictures? Yes. No question about it. Does that confirm that even though the computer can current limit, that it can't do it forever? Can only do it for so long before it cooks this driver. This is why, another lesson on why we don't drive cars with mis misfires. You better pull over and check that thing out. Otherwise, you're going to cost yourself a lot of money as opposed to a $50 coil. Now you need a $500 computer too. What else does that tell me? Or what else is the argument here that I hear from people? Well, you're going to cause a misfire and it's going to pop and bang and... No, it's not. This coil is shorted. It's not doing anything, so we're not firing it. And when I took this good coil away, that one's not firing either. I just have a two-cylinder misfire right now. It's not, not a problem. And if that coil happened to be good, I would be firing it at the wrong time. And if I heard a pop and bang, I would just stop and shut it off. One or two is not going to kill it. It's firing at the wrong time. So what? You get a pop through the intake because the intake valve is still open. You get a pop through the exhaust because it's at the wrong time. So what? I need this to stress the circuit, to see the pattern, to be sure. Does that make sense? This car needed a computer and a coil. But I use this, though, to stress the shorted coil control issue. And it, that, all of that still applies. So I didn't intentionally mislead you or change anything that we just learned. Questions? You probably don't even know what to ask me. <laughs> Is it... Is it clear, the stuff that I've been talking about? Kind of. It's coming together. It's come together. Yeah. Dramatically. Cool. It's cool. Because you're seeing similarities, aren't you? Yeah. You're seeing it in section three. You're seeing it in the injector section. You're seeing it again with the ignition. You're seeing it with the fuel pump circuits that we did. Michael. A cracked coil pack or coil, we wouldn't be on the control issue. We'd be on the secondary side. And we haven't really covered that yet. Okay. So we have some other things we need, to, we need to do. I think I can do it in an hour, but I'm not going to do it today. I'll do it tomorrow. We have one more day. You guys, I told you, you're taking a test and helping me inventory, but we need to do one more segment. Can you handle it? It's the last, it's the last time you get to hear me speak. One more segment. What we'll cover is the secondary issues. Can we identify secondary problems? How do we handle that? And, and that would be these other ones, Michael. We'll, we'll deal with the coil over plug test. We'll deal with this picture that has an open plug wire. Uh, we'll deal with synchronizing them. We'll deal with shorted secondary windings in these oscillations. That'll be the next, uh, next stuff. And guys, to answer Michael's question of what if you have a cracked winding, you cannot see all problems in a primary current pattern, which is what you're looking at on the screen here. You can't see all problems on the primary side. Sometimes you need to look at the secondary side. And sometimes you need to pull the coil out and put your test light on it and see how far the spark jumps. I'm okay with that. Laying it across the valve cover and see if it's jumping out of the boot. There's nothing wrong with those tests. We don't always have to to be high tech. Uh, when that coil lives under the intake, we need to be a little bit more high tech, but we'll, we'll cover those other variables tomorrow. That's good enough for now.